So I'm going to talk about some more antenna stuff today. This is what I put on the tower yesterday. This is a Televis Ellipse UHF model. It is not a repack edition. As far as I know, they don't have a UHF only repack model yet. They have the new one with the VHF. And the reason I chose this one is because it has the mount at the back and I can mount it on the side of a tower versus having the reflector behind the mount where you could not put it on the side of a tower. You might could put it on a side, uh, a side arm, but you may not have. You may not be able to do that because there may not be enough room. So it's not the newest and the greatest, but it does have a preamp built in and these guys, if the preamp gets uh, hit by a lightning surge or something, it'll go into passive mode and still work. Not as good, but it will work. We have on top of the antenna tower is the earlier version, non-repack edition of the Televis um, Datboss LR mix with the uh, low VHF elements on it. So. It does high VHF, low VHF, and then you've got the UHF elements here. Huge, huge antenna. So yeah, that's the non-repack edition up there at the top. Then the ellipse that we showed you the box of right there, and then the GHD outdoor antenna there. We have an eight bay bow tie antenna here that I hooked up a year, year and a half ago, and I wasn't really satisfied with the signal quality and all. Um, we'll get into that in a little and bit. I have two of the like 91X style. It's not a Yagi. It's a uh, log periodic UHF antenna. Some people advertise these as VHF, but I've never gotten any, any VHF channels off of these. So they're pretty much UHF. And there's the other one over there. Here is a VHF high antenna. My largest of, I got two made by Stellar Labs. That's the largest one they make. I got the smaller one as well, which I've actually never installed. I have my 80 foot tire, which is 70 foot up there. I don't know if I can even zoom in there or not. Still has, uh, have to get the last 10 foot section in and secure it. But, what my 40 foot tower has uh, going against it is that we have trees like this big giant cottonwood that's probably around 70 to 75 foot. Most of the trees here are probably under 65 foot, but we do have some that are a little taller. But even a 60 or you know 45 foot tree, you know, could block the signals, especially when leaves are on the tree of you know, a tower is can be critical but then again sometimes you do not have a perfect place for it so as you see this is one of my um actual uh sets of towers is going like this way right through there right over like sweet gums camphor trees and some pine trees and oaks behind the antenna is probably about 30 three to 34 foot in the air because it's lower than the mast and it's on the side of the tower and it's going against all this forest here. So even when we go back here to a small clearing, we're going right through, there's another pile of trees and all blocking the signal a little thing bit. going against us is the distance between the tower and the actual tuners in the house, which is probably 300 plus feet. And then we have, barrel, you know, one or two extra barrel connectors. So, you know, problems with, uh, you know, that can take some of your signal out. And then we're using RG6 which we're gonna be upgrading to RG11 to get even less signal blockage later. 11 has a, a lot bigger copper core in the middle. So less voltage loss, less signal loss. It's very stiff and hard to work with. 
you do kind of have to add barrel connectors and pigtails in certain areas just so you you don't break the connections on the antennas or preamps and stuff like that. When I was up the tower yesterday, the uh, the line, the power line, you know, coming from the uh, home to the the top of the tower where it connects to the antenna or preamp has a, a like a rusted out connection. It still works, but I did not have tools with me up in the air to actually fix and replace the connector. So it's possible we could get an even better signal once we replace that connector, hopefully soon. So without even, you know, fine tuning the ellipse dish, ellipse, you know, I should say dish antenna, we were able to get all of our channels through the uh, forest there. And we get, we got signals of some of the further channels or the low uh, output low wattage channels as well but they're not stable so just by having that preamp up there we also have gotten some other kind of low output signals in the in the further stations you know with the uh, that boss mix LR televis antenna on the top um, one thing we didn't get is one of our Jacksonville stations is 47. It's coming in off and on. The signal is not great. And I'm guessing that even if we fix that cable, it, 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 it could go either way, but most likely it's not going to be stable, even if it comes in better than it is People now. I have any questions like which antenna is, is the best and there's probably really no good answer because every situation is different you know do you have line of sight do you have buildings or trees in the way how f the distance you know between you and the towers and you know the elevation you know difference um Sometimes when you point in a single direction you know there could be several towers you know in different degrees you know away from the main area so the beam width of the antenna may be different based on you know the signal strength and you know how far you have to home in on it so different antennas have different beam widths and the, the beam width changes based on the frequency you know of the channels as passive well. gain on your antennas are usually dictated by the the uh, beam width you know so an, an omnidirectional antenna which gets its signal a full like 360 degree, degrees around it has the lowest gain then maybe a panel antenna may have you know 30 plus degrees of, of beam width um, some some antennas get signal from front and back some of them have reflectors that block the back signal it's like the uh, Dat Boss long range um, mix antennas, they have a pretty narrow beam width, probably 30 degrees or less. But even if you have three or four stations that are 30 degrees apart, you know, depending on a number of factors, you may have to fine tune the aiming close to, you know, the station, station X, Y, Z, and over here, you know, 28 degrees this way, you may miss out. And if you start aiming it toward this other station, these will disappear or become unstable at least. That's my experience with my furthest towers, which are between like, like 30 and like 77 miles away. That's where the kind of like the X91 or 91X uh, log periodics were able to get the entire beam width, this like 28, 30 degree beam width, maybe a little bit more and catch all the signals, but it did not fine tune one or two of the channels you know, did not tune to one or two of them that the DAT boss was able to. And that could be because I wasn't using the best preamp or it could be just, you know, 
that that boss is just because of the the higher gain because of the narrower bean width width could just get the signal so bigger. this set up here uh, with a little bit of fine tuning on that one and that one is going to be it's probably hit 95 plus percent of the mark for me but I'm missing like one crucial channel that I may or may not get at, at you know 40 foot in the air but that said at 80 foot in the air on antenna tower 2 I'm pretty sure I can get everything that I want there and just just also I'm scanned and scanned and scanned you know over the last 24 hours and I'm getting hints of some of the low power stations that'll probably never be stable on that 40 foot tower but we might can bring in you know 10 15 20 extra channels that are mostly stable 80 foot in the air so that's definitely um something that i need to think about i use the x91 ever again um i don't know i mean if we can get everything with the new repack model of the uh dat boss lr mix with the low vhf and that ellipse possibly adding that G antenna for the ion networks we may not need that so why did i buy you know two x you know 91 x's and two vhf antennas i guess the vhf high antennas are better you know in all tests than the all-in-one antenna the all-in-one antenna has low vhf elements though there's, there's one or two low VHF channels that I need. And, and you know, like I said, the, the newest model is repacked, so it's the frequencies are adjusted, you know, the elements and all, for the, the repack. And uh, the X91 or 91X or whatever are still using the old design. Hopefully they'll redesign it. For a repack and it might even be better than the Telebus. It's hard to tell. So the Telebus Dat Ball series, there's probably three in the non-repack and three different ones in the repack. There's probably a UHF only, UHF and high VHF, and then high VHF, low VHF, and UHF. So you have all different configurations for your market.